Hi, I am Dr. Palas Ghosh, an assistant professor at the Department of Mathematics, IIT Guwahati. My research areas are statistics, biostatistics, machine learning, data privacy, and clinical trial. Basically, I design a simple to advanced clinical trial. And today, the work that I am going to talk about, it's in the adaptive randomization in the smart trial with binary outcome. And this is a joint work with my PhD student, Mr. Rick Ghosh, and my collaborator, Vivas Chakraborty from Duke and US Medical School, along with two other collaborators, Imbal Nam Sahani and Megan Patrick, both are from University of Michigan. So as you know that um, how the drugs comes into the market, so and, and that FDA in US and CDSCO in uh, India, they approve the drug based on a clinical trial. And what is clinical trial? In a specific clinical trial, basically we call this randomized control trial or RCT, we have two arms. Okay, A and B. Say for example, A is the new drug and B is the existing drug or placebo, that is no drug. So now, um, statistician calculate that what will be the minimum sample size required for establishment the efficacy of a particular drug. Say for example, that turns out to be 200. Now, this patient will come sequentially and then we basically toss a fair coin to allocate the patient 50-50 ratio to the A or B. Say for example, I toss the coin and if it turns out to be head and then I will allocate A, otherwise I will allocate B. Now, once that uh, entire trial is completed, I will look at this outcome. If the outcome is binary, that means yes, no kind of things, then I'll compare the proportion and if the outcome is continuous, I'll compare the basic means. And then the, of course, that based on the results, the FDA or the CDSCO in India, they will approve the drug to be available in the market. Now you think about that, yeah, when the drugs in the market and you are suffering from a particular disease and went to a doctor and doctor prescribed a particular medicine to you. Say for example, that medicine is A. Now, if A is working, the doctor will say that you continue with the A, particularly in the chronic disease setup. And be, but if A is not working, that is not responding well, then doctor will say that you switch to another drug C. Now you have a sequence of drug instead of one particular drug, AA or AC. Now, how to compare these two sequences? That's mathematically challenging and statistically, the methods are much more complicated compared to the different RCT. Now, that's where a new kind of clinical trial comes into the pictures. It's called the SMART. That is sequential multiple assignment randomized control trial. And compared to the RCT, it has multiple stages. It can be have two or more than stages. And in different stages, we have different randomization points. Now, if you talk about the drug sequence, it's a not a static sequence, it's a dynamic sequence. See, because you are starting with A, now you may end up with AA or AC. Now comparing these are the much more challenges and that's why uh, we are coming into the pictures with respect to the SMART trial. And now, even in the SMART or RCT, when we are doing the randomization, we are doing in a equal basis, that is 50-50 allocation of the patient. Now, you think about that, patients are coming sequentially. Now, when patients are sequentially, we have 10 or 20 patients, we have the information about how the drugs are working at that point of time. Now, using that information, I can tweak the randomization ratio and that's called the adaptive randomization. We are adapting to the randomization scheme. Now, I tweak the randomization from 50-50 to 60-40. Then that will allocate 20% more patients to have the better treatment at that point of time. I can re-change this allocation ratio in the later half. But now in the SMART, because it has the multiple stages and multiple randomization points, the problem becomes much, much complicated. And that's where our recent work is working. And we propose that we first optimize the final stage of time in randomization points, and then we pass that information backward to the first stage to optimize the allocation ratio. And the problem is that if you do that in the forward way, it will give you suboptimal solution. And this work is extremely important for us. And it is uh, uh, right now published in one of the esteemed journal in statistics. Um, uh, it's called the biometrics. And what is the advantage of this, uh, uh, this work is that it is twofold. First, we have shown that if you follow our randomization procedure, and we have also the procedure how to implement that things in practice, then you will see that the overall number of failures compared to the equal randomization is much, much improved. That means we have much lower failures in the entire SMART study. And once the study is completed, we have the drug sequences. And there is a chronological order, which drug sequences is the best and which is the worst. Now, if you see that 
using our procedure the number of patient which are allocated to the best one that is the highest and the number of patient allocated to the worst one that is the lowest now with respect to the indian context it much much valuable because this smart trial are the backbone of the bigger umbrella called personalized medicine okay in personalized medicine what the objective this smart will develop the decision rule and what what it does it does that it offered the right treatment to the right participant at the right point of time and that's a huge beneficial because it's a cost effective and you know that uh, the personalized medicine is the future of uh, medicine so in particularly in indian context it will be much much beneficial to the patient and when patient know that they are treated in a personalized manner and using adaptive randomization they have a higher chance of getting the best medicine so they will much much willing to participate in the study and it will improve the adherence rate as well as it is uh, lower the dropout rate and overall success of the clinical trial and we are also working with uh, different indian institution to uptake the smart in much much greater way and that will beneficial uh, the indian community as well as the indian healthcare sector i hope to see that the smart is applicable in different industry as well as the investigator initiated clinical trial thank you so much so here uh, we have a two arm rct say for example the a is the new drug and uh, b is the existing drug and what we do say patient are coming here and we toss a coin a uh, fair with fair coin that is with probability 0.5 head and with probability 0.5 tail and then uh, if the head comes out then patient will get a and uh, otherwise the patient will get b so this will make a balanced comparison between the two treatments a and b now what happened uh, after when people use this drug in practice a or b some of them will be responding then be responding well and some of them will be not responding well called the non responder now in case of the smart trial the responder because they are working fine they will continue with this new drug a but those who are non responding that means not doing well they will again be randomized at the stage 2 with the same equal probability but what we do in the adaptive case so because these patient are coming sequentially i have some external information that how they are working fine or not so based on 20 or uh, 30 samples we have say for example a is working better then i will tweak that probability of randomization from 0.5 to 0.6 in favor of the beta treatment now that will go on later this probability can change depending on how these two are performing here similarly for each randomization point i will do that adaptive adaptive in the sense adaptive towards the beta treatment now you think about that when you have a sequence this is called the dynamic sequences this is much more difficult and what we did exactly we randomized mean, we optimized this randomization allocation first and here first then we put that information backward to optimize that that is our novelty coming into the pictures and if you think about the dtr so this is the dtr or the dynamic treatment regime so you are starting with a then if you are a responder you will continue then your sequence will be a but if you are a non responder you will switch to another treatment c then your treatment sequence will be ac since when you are starting here you are not sure whether you are ended with aa or ac and that's the what dynamic coming to the pictures and to compare this kind of uh, dynamic treatment regimes the smart trial are developed and those are the backbone of developing decision rules those are used in personalized decision rule or personalized medicine